Will China's fourth aircraft carrier shock the world with nuclear power? As the official induction of the Fujian ship triggers global attention, this unanswered question is stirring up heated discussions in the international military watchdog community. U.S. Naval experts have predicted with conviction that China will begin construction of a nuclear-powered supercarrier in 2025 and have asserted that the launch could happen as early as 2027. Is this extraordinary rate of construction possible? What kind of technology is the Chinese Navy hiding under the reality that the Type 003 carrier is still conventionally powered? The debate over the power system of the Type 004 carrier is essentially a trade-off between strategic needs and technological risks. The argument in favor of nuclear power is that China has already mastered compact naval technology through the merchant ship application of the Linglong-1 small nuclear reactor and the latest disclosure of CNNC's integrated power system for ships, realizes the efficient conversion of nuclear energy into electrical energy, which is precisely the basis for electromagnetic catapults and future directed energy weapons. Satellite images show a new land-based test facility on Haludao Island conducting simulation tests of a shipboard nuclear power system with steam catapults that differ from the Fujian ship's electromagnetic catapults, suggesting that nuclear power may already be in the verification stage. However, conventional power pies emphasize realistic feasibility. The Fujian ship's four steam turbines have a total power of 280,000 horsepowers, which is comparable to the U.S. military's early Nimitz class, and if the tonnage is increased to 90,000 tons, the existing power system can still support operational needs. And the Chinese Navy is facing the Taiwan Strait situation in 2027. Davis Window, conventional power construction cycle, can be shortened to 54 months, while the nuclear power from the reactor test to the radiation protection system validation needs an additional three to five years. This time cost is particularly sensitive under current geopolitical pressures, regardless of the form of power. There is a consensus that the Type 004 carriers have made a breakthrough in the efficiency of carrier takeoff and landing. The Fujian ship's three electromagnetic catapults have already achieved an average of 200 takeoffs and landings per day, but there is still a gap with the four catapults of the U.S. Ford class. Four may adopt the CBL design of the CV and X program, which will widen the deck to 85 meters, shorten the length of the ship's island, and realize the layout of four bombs and three risers, to increase the takeoff and landing efficiency by 30 percent. The recently revealed stealthy integrated island of the Wuhan cement carrier is highly similar in appearance to the Ford class, suggesting that China may have skipped the traditional design and directly adopted digital twin technology for optimization. More critically, the medium-voltage DC integrated power system validated on the Fujian ship is a generation ahead of the U.S. medium-voltage AC system, with a 95% power conversion efficiency, providing a stable energy guarantee for the parallel operation of four electromagnetic catapults. The system can also simultaneously support laser anti-missile and electromagnetic railgun and other energy-consuming weapons, making Type 004 the world's first carrier platform to realize the concept of all-electric warship. Dalian Shipbuilding Heavy Industry DSHI has built a new 400-meter class dry dock to meet the construction needs of a 100,000-ton supercarrier, an investment in infrastructure that shows that China's plans to upgrade the tonnage of its carriers have entered the implementation phase. Jiangnan Shipyard's pioneering giant section construction method, which increases the modularity of the hull to 60 percent, has shortened the construction cycle of the Fujian ship by 40 percent and the main structure of the 80,000-ton hull can be completed in 36 months after this process is transplanted to the 004 model. Satellite images show whole segments of more than 330 meters in length at a shipyard in the north, which exceeds the 317 meters of the Fujian ship, corroborating the speculation of a jump in tonnage. In terms of shipboard equipment, the Type 004 may carry a third-generation digital phased array radar with the number of T. Our components increased to 5,000, extending the detection range to 600 kilometers, forming a double-layer anti-stealth system with the Airborne Alert 600 early warning aircraft. The weapon system may integrate the newly tested shipboard hypersonic missiles with a range covering targets at sea within 1,500 kilometers, and this integrated offensive and defensive design will reshape the operational paradigm of the carrier battle group. U.S. Naval War College projections show that the Type 004, if in service by 2027, 
would bring China's carrier deployment density in the Western Pacific to one every 500 nautical miles, completely upsetting the existing balance of power. The nuclear-powered version could support a carrier battle group in the Indian Ocean for 90 days, forming a triangular deterrent with the Djibouti base and strategic nuclear submarines in the South China Sea. But the lessons of Francis Charles de Gaulle suggest that the pursuit of nuclear power alone could come at the expense of attendance. The ship averages only 120 days of deployment per year due to reactor maintenance, while China's Shandong has maintained over 200 days of operational readiness in recent years. It is worth noting that China may be adopting a nuclear and conventional strategy. The Jiangnan plant will continue the conventional power route to rapidly expand the fleet size while the Dalian plant will simultaneously develop nuclear power technology. This model draws on the U.S., Kitty Hawk, Class and Enterprise, parallel historical experience, not only to meet the near-term operational needs of the Taiwan Strait direction, but also for the long-term global deployment of the accumulation of technical reserves. The Pentagon report points out that the collaborative research and development between XIC and CNNC has formed a complete industrial chain providing multiple options for a variety of generation IV reactor technologies from high-temperature gas-cooled reactors to thorium-based molten salt reactors. Although U.S. experts are confident that the Type 004 will begin construction in 2025, the tradition of secrecy in China's military-industrial system keeps the truth shrouded in mystery. The ability to modularize and mutate during the construction of Fujian, i.e., to change the design to electromagnetic catapults in a hurry after construction has begun is evidence of the technological resilience of China's carrier engineering. The final form of Type 004 may transcend the debate over its power-only form. It could be the world's first ship to implement reactor electric power. It could be the world's first smart carrier to achieve deep integration of reactor grid weapon systems. With artificial intelligence coordinating the distribution of energy to increase the efficiency of carrier aircraft deployment by another 25 percent, while the international community is focusing on the nuclear power label, deep breakthroughs in China's aircraft carrier engineering are taking place no matter what kind of power is used for the Type 004. Behind it stands the world's most complete industrial system, the largest group of engineers, and the most resolute strategic will. From high-temperature alloy smelting to quantum communication and navigation, from 3D printing of whole components to digital twin testing, every aspect is undergoing a silent revolution. Perhaps when the true face of Type 004 is revealed, the world will see not only the birth of an aircraft carrier, but also a new paradigm for the evolution of marine civilization. Here, the choice of power form is just an appearance and the real battle has long been extended to the no-man's land of intelligent manufacturing and system innovation.